This is the key. You want to have success in your career. You want to have an impact upon people. Here is how you can do it. Hola a todos y bienvenidos a este espacio. En esta ocasión te traigo un video que espero te motive donde quiera que estés a seguir perseverando en tu vida. Todos anhelamos el éxito, pero ¿qué significa realmente tener éxito en este mundo tan complejo en el que vivimos? ¿Es el éxito únicamente medido en términos de riqueza, de conocimiento, de prestigio en la sociedad? ¿O hay algo más profundo que debemos descubrir? En esta charla, considerado uno de los 10 químicos más destacados del mundo, incluso por algunos llamado como el Newton moderno, el doctor James Tour, un químico cristiano, nos habla sobre la clave que lo ha llevado hacia la cima del éxito en su vida. Así que te invito a que veas este video, que hagas un comentario, que lo compartas o que dejes un like en el video, de modo que el algoritmo de YouTube comience a reactivar nuestra plataforma y nuestros videos y comience a circular nuevamente el material que estamos compartiendo para todos ustedes. But what I want to do today specifically is to challenge you to walk deeper in faith through the word of God because it will impact a career. How can one push their career forward? much differently and much more effectively than a person who does not know Christ. How could someone do that if they're a believer? Can it be done? Well, you know, there, there, there are things that are revealed to us in the scriptures. It says in Deuteronomy chapter, 7, verse, chapter 17, Deuteronomy 17, verse 14 onward. This is an instruction for kings when, they were to t when a king would come in to Israel. This is what they were to do. And no king ever walked in this. But this is what their instruction in the law to do. So this is written in Deuteronomy. And Moses wrote this. He says, when you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you and you possess it and live in it, and you say, I will set a king over me like the nations who are around me, you shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses, one from among your countrymen. You shall set as king over you yourselves. You may not put a foreigner over yourselves who is not your countryman. Moreover, he shall not multiply horses for himself. He shall not cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses, since the Lord said you shall never return again that way. He shall not multiply wives for himself, or else his heart will turn away. Nor shall he greatly increase in silver and gold for himself. So it gives a bunch of things that he shouldn't do. None of the kings ever walked in that. But here's the things that he was supposed to do. It says, now it shall come about when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself a copy of this law on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priests. It shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God by carefully observing all the words of this law and these statutes that his heart may not be lifted up above his countrymen and that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right or to the left, so that he and his sons may continue long in his kingdom in the midst of Israel. So here is what he was supposed to do. It says, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself a copy of this law on a scroll. Have you ever been to a synagogue and seen how big the Torah is? The law of Moses, the first five books of the Bible. When these things are written by hand, it's a large document. It's not something you carry in your pocket. Big scrolls. He was to write for himself his own copy of it in the presence of the Levitical priests. They were watching over him to make sure that every letter was right. Every mark was right. Every jot, every tittle had to be correct. And it says, it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life. It shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life. This is the key. You want to have success in your career. You want to have an impact upon people. Here is how you can do it. You take the word of God, and you make it your daily meditation. He was to read it every day of his life. It was to be with him. Imagine wherever he went, he had to have these big scrolls along with him. And he was to read it every day of his life. Why? Why? It says, so that he may learn to fear the Lord his God by carefully observing all the words 
of the law and these statutes so that he may learn to fear God. We are to fear God by reading the scriptures. Where we read the scriptures, we go, "Uh uh-oh. My life's not where it should be. You want to have an impact in the world? This is how you can do it. Or you can be just like the unbeliever and never do this and just wrestle with this like they do. There's a lot of competition out there. But here's how you can have an impact upon lives. You take the scriptures and you make it your daily meditation. You'll learn to fear God. It'll keep your heart, it says, that his heart may not be lifted up above his countrymen. The word pride is written upon our foreheads. Everybody else sees it before we do. What can keep us from this? It says when you're daily in the word of God, it will keep you from lifting up your head above your countrymen. That he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right or to the left, so that he and his sons may continue long in the kingdom of, in the midst of Israel. The best thing that you can do for your children is to meditate daily on the word of God. That is the best thing you can do for your children. You'll have all sorts of savings accounts for them, savings accounts for their college and everything. That pales in comparison to meditating daily on the word of God. That is the best thing that you can do for them. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 45, Moses is summarizing 40 years of instruction. When a student is going to get a PhD, they go to do their PhD defense talk, and I say a few words about them trying to summarize their their four years of research. How do you summarize 40 years of instruction? That's 10 PhDs. How do you do it? How do you summarize that? Here's how Moses summarized it. Deuteronomy 32, 45. When Moses had finished speaking all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to your heart all the words with which I am warning you today, which you shall command your sons to observe carefully, even all the words of this law. For it is not an idle word for you. Indeed, it is your life. And by this word, you will prolong your days in the land which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. It is not an idle word for you. Indeed, it is your life. The scriptures are our life. When we neglect the scriptures, we neglect our life. How much we leave on the table in our life when we neglect the scriptures. This is our life. The scriptures are our life. And it influences what our life will be like when we get into our careers. So this feeling that students often have, when I graduate, then I'll have more time. That is a lie. It won't happen. Wherever you are, you start meditating in the Word of God every day. What would be the result of this? Well, let's, let's look at what the scriptures say. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have, have success. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not fear or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So Moses says to Joshua... This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it. You're to meditate on this book. The Bible puts it two ways, and we're going to see it. It puts it two ways. It puts it every day, and it puts it day and night. There is no promised blessing for being in the Word of God three days a week. None. Maybe there's a blessing, maybe there isn't. I don't know. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say it. But it says there's a specific blessing for being in the Word of God every day. And you cannot convince me that it is impossible. And I know that because the Word of God says we should do it, and God never puts upon us something that's impossible. That's number one. And number two, because for 45 years I have done it every day of my life. For 45 years. 
and I've raised four children, and I've had an active career, and I've done it every day for 45 years. So you cannot convince me that it cannot be done. And he says that you're to meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it, and then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you'll have success, and the prosperity of God is worth so much more than what the world offers. It is a closeness of fellowship that come what may, I know my God is with me. As Jesus said, he who sent me is trustworthy, Jesus said. He who sent me is trustworthy, and I believe it. Jesus said, he's trustworthy, he'll be with me. You have that closeness of relationship when you're daily in the word of God. This is the promise he promises this success. Over and over again, it is promised. Psalm 1, how blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does he prospers. The wicked are not so. The scriptures tell us the wicked are not so. For, for they're like, they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment and the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. This is what the word of God promises us. You will be like a tree firmly planted when everybody else is drying up because the things of life start piling on and you wonder, do you have anything left to give to another? Do you have anything left? If you are in the word of God, you will have plenty left, overflowing if you are daily in the word of God. If you are not, you will be deficient. You take a man, you take a woman, you feed them just three, three days a week and tell me how well they will function. What will their energy level be like if they could only eat three days a week? What do you think it's like spiritually when you're in the Word of God only three days a week? Would you have anything to give out to people? This is what it's like in the Word of God. You be in the Word of God every day. This is the promise every day. This is the promise from God. Psalm 112, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. If not for yourself, how about for your children? God says, your descendants will be mighty on earth. Mighty on this earth. You'll watch with your own eyes. Your children will become mighty on this earth when you make this word of God your delight. You make the scriptures your delight. You make it your meditation. Sometimes um, students want to win my favor or something, and, and it's very hard to really win my favor. <laughs> but I'll give you the secret on how you can do it. You be nice to my children. If you're good to my children, I'll always remember you. You know, when my, when my kids were, were going through school, Sometimes they, they want me to help them with their homework, and I was never very good at helping them. Remember my daughter brought me her chemistry sheet to work on, and you'd think I could do chemistry, right? You'd think I could do <laughs> So I took her paper, t -t 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 -t. yeah, that's how you do it. I wasn't very good at teaching my own daughter. So what I would do is I would get some of my students, hey, I want you to sit down here and teach my daughter. And they teach them. My kids learned calculus, from the engineers at Rice University. My daughter was having a terrible time with physics in high school. I had an, uh, an electrical engineer sit down with her and she got an A in physics. I always remember those people that blessed my children. My custodian who cleans my office and, and my labs, I saw her when she first started. I said, what's your name? She said, Maria. I said, Maria, tell me. Do you have children? She said, yeah, I have two sons, and they were in high school. And I said, are they going to be going to college? She said, I don't think so. 
I said, you have to bring them in to see me. You have to bring them in to see me. She brought them in to see me. We sat in my office. I talked with them about college. I talked with them about life. I talked with them about the Lord. Led one of them to the Lord that day. Maria has never forgotten that. She's been my custodian for 10 years. I just moved to another building. They transferred her to be with me because I said, Maria's moving with me. <laughs> my colleagues say, how come everybody's always working on your office, coming in, doing a lot? You be nice to people's children, they take care of everything for you. <laughs> People who have been nice to my children, just, I remember them. It's the same with God. You be good to his son, and he will always remember you. It's Jesus said in John 12, 26, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant also be. And if anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Imagine the God of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe, the 10 to the 90th particles of the universe. He made them all. He says, stand back, angels. You see that person serving my son? I'm going to go bless them right now. Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant also be. And whoever serves me, the Father will honor him. When you have a life of service to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father will honor you. You guys pour out your lives for people. This is what physicians do. And sometimes there's not much left. And the scriptures say, when we are filled with Jesus, there is plenty, plenty. And you will get this by daily being in the word of God, daily in the word of God. And you will have plenty to give to people. You may think there is nothing left, but you can drop a word in. When you serve Jesus, and when your heart is, I do this for my Lord. If you serve people, you know, sometimes they, 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 they will just resent your service. They'll condemn you for your service. But I don't serve them directly. I am serving my Lord. It changes everything when you are serving Jesus. He is the focal point. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus answered and said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. Think about that. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. How does Jesus assess our love for him? How does he do that? It's not by saying hallelujah. It's not by... He told us right here. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. When you are in the word of God, what, what did we read? That it says that it will give us the fear of God. You meditate in this word each day. You get the fear of God. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. What's the result of that? The result of that is, Jesus said, the Father, my Father, will love him. And my, my Father will love him. You be good to the Son, the Father is coming to bless you. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him and we will come to him, it says. Trouble yourself no longer. We are coming to you. That's what it says. The Holy Spirit you've already got. But it says Jesus and his Father. He says we will come to him. We are coming to him. And we will make our abode with him. Can there be anything, anything better, 
anything better to think of than Jesus and his Father making their abode with us. You will have plenty to give in your life. You will have success over and over again and not success as the world levels success. This is success from God. You will have plenty when Jesus and his Father make their abode with you, people will see you and be like, something is different about you. There's this peace that just came into my room. So Jesus and his Father are with you as well. The scriptures teach us how to do this. And this is daily meditation in the word of God. If you are not in the habit of doing this, I challenge you, this day, September 30th, 2023, to commit this day to do it. And you cannot convince me it cannot be done. And I would suggest you do it first thing in the morning because I know what evenings are like. The days can get away from you. But if you wake up 15 minutes earlier, then you have to. If you need to, grab a cup of coffee, get your word of God, 15 minutes in the Word of God, I challenge you to start with. And I want you to learn to read meditatively because the Bible speaks of meditation on the Word of God much more than it speaks of reading the Word of God. This is slow, pensive, thoughtfully. Let me teach you how to do it. It's not hard. I can teach you in three minutes. Say you pick up tomorrow John's God, the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 1. And before you start reading, say, Lord, speak to me through your word. Speak to me this day. Because in the epistle of James, chapter 4, it tells us, you do not receive because you do not ask. The main reason why we do not receive is because we flat out never asked. Ask God. Say, Lord, speak to me through this word. And then read verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Stop. Right there. Stop. Read it again. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Stop. Now read it in sections. In the beginning. Lord, what does that mean, in the beginning? That means before there was ever time, before anything. In the beginning. Would it, would it after that? In the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was already there. So at the beginning, of it, God was already there. In the beginning was the Word. Was the Word. Word. That's kind of an esoteric thing, word. In the beginning was word. If, if, if you've ever studied computer science, I mean, word is information. In the beginning was information. In the beginning was information. What does that mean? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. This word, this information was with God. And the word was God. The word was God. This information was God. This is meditating on a verse. Now you go to verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. Who's the he? That's the word. The same thing he's talking. He was. Now it, it puts a pronoun, he. So all of a sudden this word now, is, this information, now becomes an individual. He. Information. If, if you study information science, you, you realize information is the heart. The matter upon which it resides is, is, is secondary. Information is primary. I have a thought in my mind. This thought just came to my mind. This thought is, is, is on just neural interconnect pathways. Haven't even formed yet. It's just going on electronically and then it goes into protein synthesis. Then I, Write that thing down on a piece of paper. So that's gone from my brain, from my mind to my brain to my piece of paper. Now I type it in my computer. It goes into the keystrokes. In the keystrokes. Now it goes into SRAM, DRAM and SRAM. Then I hit save. It goes into flash memory, a deep trench capacitor on a transistor. So, and then I upload that thing to the cloud. And it's going through a radio frequency wave, an RF wave, to a box on the wall. Same information. It's now in a different medium. Now it's in an RF wave. It wasn't a piece of paper. 
It wasn't, it wasn't transistors. Now it's in, in a way. Now it hits that box on the wall, goes down a wire to some server farm and gets dumped into flash memory again. The medium on which the information was residing has changed over and over again. The information was the critical part. God is this word. This is how he describes himself. And then when you get down to verse 14, your mind will explode. Because the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word, that information became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. And as John says, not in his gospel, but in his epistle, and we handled him, we touched him. He became physical. This is meditation on the word of God. This is what you do. In 15 minutes, you only might get up to verse 6. That's okay. The next day you wake up, you start at verse 7, the same way. Lord, speak to me. Speak to me through this passage. And you read each verse slowly, meditatively. And you will come out of that time like a roaring lion. You may have gone in thinking, there's no way I'm going to get done all I need to get done today. Ugh. And you will come out like, get out of my way. I can handle this. Because you're going to be so filled up with God, with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, and with his Father. They will have made their abode with you. And this is how you can impact in your career. This is how you can have a, an enormous effect that goes beyond what the unbeliever could ever do. You will do more than the unbeliever could ever do in your career. And I thank God for the people who are here. I thank God for people who donate into organizations like this to help students that are coming along and to help them to learn at an early age to take the word of God and make it their meditation. To learn how to go on mission trips. To see the older ones of you going and serving and kneeling down next to somebody on some mission field and pouring out yourselves for them. I thank God for organizations like this that demonstrate to young people, that demonstrate to students that we have people that are willing to pay for this, people that are willing to do it, people that are willing to reflect this over and over again. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service to my King. And as I prayed in the beginning, Jesus' prayer at the end of his life, John chapter 17, verse 4. Father, I have glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you have given me to do. May we be able to say that when we lay down our heads. Many people have asked me if I was going to talk about nanotechnology today, and I'm not going to. But I will mention some of the things that we're working on. Uh, we have, a, in the medical arena, we started a company. I, I started it with a gentleman named, named uh, Cullen Taniguchi at MD Anderson in GI Oncology. And uh, uh, this is to, to be able to protect the duodenum when you give large doses of radiation uh, at, at the, directed at the head of the pancreas. And so we, we've developed a drug that, that uh, protects, that you just drink it and then 15 min minutes later you can, you can radiate away. And so that, that's going on there. And then we have a, a, another medical company that I've, I've done with a, we, we've developed a drug and that was in collaboration with a researcher and, and physician named Tom Kent who was at Baylor for many years and now is at uh, uh, Texas A&M. And then a, a third company called Neurocords where we're use, uh, using graphene nanoribbons to heal up spinal cord injury.
And uh, I made a YouTube short out of that. And uh, that YouTube short has almost 5 million views. So, so if you went to my YouTube channel, uh, DR James Tour, and uh, look, look at the, the short videos there. Just, if you just did Spinal Cord DR James Tour, I mean, it, it'd come right up. And you could watch, it's like one minute, and you'll see how, how we're going after the healing of spinal cords. Uh, so that, that's it from the medical side. And then we have a lot of other materials companies uh, that we've built and, and uh, trying to be able to take waste and, and turn it into cash, uh, where we take trash and, and uh, put a burst of electricity and, and uh, little bit of current and change it in that way.